Ladies and gentlemen, this is Lutano's Beko TV, my channel, your channel. Welcome to it. Today I have an honor of being joined by one of the finest players South Africa has produced, uh, a legend in his own right, uh, former Dortmund, Amina Bellefeld, um, played 73 times for Bafana Bafana, more than 200 Bundesliga games, close to um, 450 career games, um, currently an assistant coach at Maris Beck, Derlon Sebastian Buckley. Mate, thank you very much for joining us. It's my pleasure to be here, man. Thank you, yeah. thank you, thank you, man. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I rocked up uh, with uh, uh, Dortmund and I, I saw <laughs> the smile behind the mask. <laughs> When I first saw that, my I started glowing. Yeah, yeah. It, it brought back memories as you walked into the hotel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, playing four years there uh, made me a top professional player. You know, I got to see football on a different stage, on a high level. Thank you. Can you sing? You'll never walk alone. <coughs> <coughs> well, uh, I, I can't sing the whole song. Yeah. Because no. Um, <laughs> I'm a man fan, so I've got to be careful what I say. Okay. <laughs> no, great stuff. No jokes. Please, um, take time, um, subscribe to our channel, um, Lutano's Beko TV. Uh, hit that notification button so that you don't miss any of our exclusive content. Darren Buckley, thank you very much for, for, for joining us. You left the country at the tender age of, of 16 when you should be out there playing with your mates and you decided to leave the country in 94. What's going through your mind? Why? Well, actually, when I grew up, I grew up in Durban, in a colored area called Sydenham. And uh, the area I grew up was, as you know, the book that I've, I've written and published around South Africa was a very um, area where drugs, alcohol was, was, was life you know all my friends <coughs> you know I have so I had so many friends that were stuck in, in such situations of alcohol and drugs but the thing is that in, in my head I always wanted to be a professional football player so when my friends went partying left and right or doing other things I was the one that was playing for team on Saturdays and Sundays I was the one that was training because I just had one vision was to to try go overseas England and to su succeed my, my fame. You wanted to go to England, but what, what, what was the drive uh, uh, I mean, uh, behind all this, you know, the motivation? Yeah. What drives you then? Well, the drive was that I was a very good, talented young football player, and the club that I played for was called Mandin Park. And at the time, uh, Gordon Ingerson's son used to play for Mandin Park for under 14s, I was under 12. So he used to always come and watch our train, our, our games. And at that time, before 94, when I went uh, to, to Germany, is when Gordon Ingerson was the coach of, I think, Manning Rangers yes. back in Durban. So he was fascinated on, on, on the qualities that I had and invited me to come and train yeah. with the first team. <coughs> so one thing led to another, and uh, he approached my family and said to them that he wants to take me overseas. And uh, yeah, there was discussions back and forth for, for six months. And eventually my family gave him authorization, you know, to take full responsible for me taking me to Germany because he was working with some guy from Germany, an agent, I don't know, Karl Amft. I think this guy was really connected to Schalke, Schalke and Ulfia. Yeah. And uh, he was the one that uh, worked with um, Gord Ingerson. And 94, at the age of 16, uh, jumped on a plane and went for trials in Germany. Wow. Mm. And the rest is history. The rest is history. It was yeah. quite funny, but the thing is that, you know, you in Durban, coming from Durban, shorts, t shirt slops, surfer boy on the beach, you jump on a plane and then you, you fly to Germany and jump off the plane in Germany and it's minus 10 degrees. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not too sure if you saw that film, uh, Cool Runnings, when the guy comes out and he starts yes, shivering. Yes, yes. So that's yes, how I yes. felt, you know? Oh yeah. God. That's how I felt. Are you alone? I was alone, yeah. I got put into a hotel for about a month. Yeah. And then I got picked up from um, 
the, the, well, the, the several clubs where I was trialing, which was Schalke, they would pick me up and take me to training. And then <coughs> one thing, they weren't interested. Then I went to another uh, club where they used to pick me up. And then I went to Rotweiss Essen, which they were in second division. I trained there for three weeks. And then uh, after that, I had one, one week left on staying in Germany. And then I went to uh, Vorfall Bochum. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, I trained there for about two or three days. And then two days later, I was supposed to fly back to Germany, uh, back to South Africa. Yes. And then uh, I got pushed into the second team of Vorfall Bochum. I had one training session. You played 11 against 11. I got the ball, took on five players, goal. I came back, we sent it again. The guy plays me the ball, I took another five, six players, scored again. Next minute, all the players are checking with the coaches. The coach was gone. You're wondering what's happening. The coach actually ran back to the office, to the management, for them to come oh. and sign me straight away. Yeah, so that's... <laughs> Bugs, that's, that, that's amazing. <coughs> I, mean, you, I mean, about a couple of days ago, you were playing football just for fun. Just for fun, uh, yeah. In, 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 in KZN, back in South Africa, and now you're taking them on. Um, you, then you sign your first contract. Um, are you thinking about the contract? Are you thinking about the opportunity just before you started? Well, actually, all I was thinking about that I wanted to play. No. There was, I wasn't thinking, because I was still young, I was 16 years old. I wasn't thinking about how a contract works and so on. So all I wanted to do was play and try make it into the first team. But the opportunity came, yes, they, they, I signed, a, I think it was a, a two-year deal. Yeah. <coughs> but it wasn't professional because back in the days in Germany, you could sign an amateur professional contract, okay. meaning you're allowed to stay in Germany, then you would get a working permit and so on. Yeah. So then uh, the, the, what, that first year in well, 94, 95, I played for the second team. And then how my breakthrough came along is that um, the first team, the coach, had players that were injured mm. and were recorded and didn't have enough squad to travel with. And Vorfeld Bochum, was still, they were still playing second division. So the game they were playing against that week was against Fortuna Düsseldorf. So he took me with. Oh. He took me out of second team and then he took me with, he took me with, the, with the first team squad. And then in Düsseldorf, um, yeah, the first half, they're all over us. They were killing us. We were losing one no. Yeah. So Klaus Top Miller, I'm sure if uh, I'm sure if you know him, he was my coach. Yeah, he yeah. was the coach for Leverkusen when they made it to the Champions League final yes. when they played against Real Madrid. Real Madrid. Yeah. So he was my coach at the time. So then second half, just five minutes after second half, he puts me in. So he took a chance because I was I was 17 years old. Took a chance, put me in. Again, centered, and you know, the qualities that I had was when I get the ball, I was fast, dribble. So I dribbled down the left wing, put a cross in, our striker, boom, 1-1. One, one. We come back, we center, we keep on playing. Get the ball again, dribble three players inside, play a through ball onto a striker, he scores 2-1. Wow. We won 2-1. And that coach said to me after that game, Bucks, you stay with the first team. Don't Please. go back to the second team. Well, wow. that's how I started. You seem to score for fun, <coughs> um, um, enjoying your football, you know, at, at, at Bochum. And, um, and then big teams come calling. Yeah, I was at Bochum for, for, for Bochum for nine years. And then the last two years of my time there, it was getting very uncomfortable because new coaches were coming in. And you know how it works in football. They bring their own players out sitting on the bench. And I hate sitting on the bench. So then I asked them for them to sell me so I can go. And they kept and you know, it was, it was such an ugly procedure. <coughs> we had eventually, um, Amina Bielefeld came along yeah. because I, I had one, one year left on my contract. So they came along and they, they bought me. And Bielefeld just got promoted back into, into the Bundesliga. But the coach they had at the time at uh, Amina Bielefeld, he wanted to build a team around me because of my speed I had. Yeah. And that's what happened. And then I went to, to Bielefeld, I signed a, a two-year two -year deal. And this coach, Uwe Rapolda, he built this whole team around me, which we had so much success. Yeah. yeah, we finished off, I think, sixth on the league, if I'm mistaken. We were beating Bayern Munich at home, Werder Bremen, Dortmund. We were having such a run. 
You know, yeah. it, was, it was my best season I ever had in Germany because I scored 15 goals. Uh, 20 goals, I scored five in the cup and 15 goals in the league. Top mm. stuff. Yeah. Um, this is obviously before Ernst Middelhoff uh, arrived. Yeah. 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 And um, obviously you, 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 you progressed, um, joined uh, 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 um, um, after Bellefield. You, you Borussia joined, Dortmund. Uh, uh, Dortmund. Um, wow, big opportunity. Yeah, as I said, you know, by Emilia Bielefeld, I had a fantastic season. I was unstoppable because of my speed. I was fit. I was scoring. And um, when Borussia Dortmund signed Bert van Meijer, the Holland coach yeah. that was the coach here at 2010 for yes, Holland, yes, yes. they signed him. And then he wanted a fast left winger because the striker we had was Jan Kola. He was two meters something, the Czech guy. Yes. So his philosophy was to get down the wings, put in the crosses, and this guy just to finish. Great. <coughs> Which was up my alley because Dortmund came along, they were interested. But the funniest thing, before they came, I, p I was supposed to go to Blackburn Rovers. I flew to Blackburn Rovers to do a medical, because Mark Hughes was the coach at the time. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so Is I Benny there at that time? Uh, Benny was there, yeah. Oh, okay. Benny and Aaron were there. Oh, Christa. Yeah, so I went there, I spoke to Mark Hughes, they made me do the medical and every single thing, and they were interested. And then when I flew back uh, to Germany, we were waiting for them to, you know, to send the contract and so on, but they were taking time. And then in those three days or four days, which um, Blackburn didn't react, Dortmund came along, out of the blue. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Buckley, we want you. Christa. Yeah, so I said, okay, Germany, just down the road, no problem. And then I signed for Dortmund. I went to Dortmund for four years. You're playing in front of 80,000 at Indona Park. How is that feeling? Well, you know, in my book I wrote that it was the first year was, it was very difficult for me. It was challenging because yeah. I came from a small club, Amina Bielefeld, which holds a capacity maybe of 25,000, 30,000 people yeah. in the stadium. Then you go to Borussia Dortmund, where they have 80,000 week in, week out, coming to watch you play. So when I went to Dortmund, the expectations were very high mm. because me coming as uh, one the second highest goal scorer in the Bundesliga, scoring 15, they expected me as a left winger to, that, uh, to score again. Running, yeah. But the system, the way they played, didn't, it wasn't the same like in Bielefeld because Bielefeld, as I said, the coach built the team around me for me to make runs behind the defense yeah. to score. But Dortmund was other way around which was very difficult. So the, as the games went, uh, went past, I weren't scoring. And then the pressure became high. The fans got onto my back. They sort of, you know, I got to a stage where they actually, I remember the game against, um, against uh, Hamburg. Mm. The fans were actually booing me oh. on the pitch that the, that, Bert, uh, that the coach had to take me off. Yeah. And it got oh. to a level where it was very extreme that I, I couldn't go to the city because I was shouted, spat at. I had to go to another city to do my grocery oh. shopping. Yeah, That's but that was the first year because, <coughs> let me tell you, when I came there, there was, before I even came, there were so much problems going on. Yeah. Dortmund had 120 million debts. They, they even confronted the players to cut their salaries. So the atmosphere in yes. Dortmund wasn't yes. pleasant and yes. I came into this atmosphere yes. 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 and I had to um, yeah, integrate, which was very difficult. And they were looking yeah. to you to lift um, the, 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 the club, the know, club. To, to make a contribution. And obviously that's when you get into that hole, um, you get depressed, you're not doing well, there's pressure. Um, just how difficult was that time for you? It was very, very di difficult, as I said to you that, you know, um, I was even scared to put my foot on the pitch. When you come into the changing room, you know, you know you're going to start the game. And you could see, I mean, in the changing room, I'm shaking. I, I don't want to play because I know what's going to happen. You know, one mistake I make, the fans are on your back. You c and you can hear the fans because it's 80,000 in the stadium. And they just, yeah, you know, and they, they, they're swearing you in German and... The minute you make the next second mistake, third mistake, then you start booing. And then, you know, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult to play under such circumstances and pressure that um, it got to a time where 
I actually fell down into a de depression where I didn't know how to handle the situation. Because back in the days, we didn't have a psychologist that come and speak to you, you know, to build you up and all that kind. There, was, there wasn't all that. You had to sort it out yourself. But it was hard because I've never ever learned that. You know, I've never ever been through situations where, okay, don't worry, you, you need to be mentally strong, you know, you're going to come out of this. I didn't know all that. So I was falling and falling and I fell into a deep hole where I just couldn't get out of it. Okay. That I even thought of committing suicide. Yeah. <coughs> Tough, man. So you, you, you spoke openly about, about your struggles, um, uh, reading your book, uh, My Life. Um, you, you reflect back through that experience. Um, how are you approaching this? I know you were at Amazulu before and now you're at Marisbeck. How are you approaching this in terms of, do you, do, do you now have conversations um, at your own, do you have a platform that you've created in, in KZN or within Marisbeck United where you're able to, to speak to the players around mental health <coughs> matters? Well, this is the reason why I wrote the book called My Life. Is because it's very hard to have direct contact to a person, for example, like me, because maybe I'm always busy. And I can tell you there are so many athletes that are going through depression, depression. they don't know how to, to come out of this deep hole where they've fallen into. So the book that I've, I've, wrote, I've written and I put out there is to help such kind of people going through depression, but not only such kind of people, also people coming out of, of um, you know, broken up homes, uh, people coming out of, of, of bad areas that, you know, it doesn't matter where you come from, you can still make it if you put your mind to it. Because as I said to you, I came out of an area where there was gangsterism, there was drugs, but I still made it. I still made it big. I still played on the highest level because I had one focus, I had one goal where I wanted to be. And this is, this is the, uh, the saddest thing also, mostly, with the with the with the, um, the youngsters which are coming up today, they always have an excuse for everything. Yeah. Ah, I can't make it because I came out of. I don't have a father. I don't have a mother. I'm living in the area. No, that's all rubbish. Huh? Yeah. It's up to you to have a mentally yeah. strongness, you know. But you're not going to make it where you want to be. You, of course, you're going to have to have help behind you yeah. to guide you. Yeah. You know, a road never goes like straight. Mentorship. Mentorship. Yeah. yeah. And when I wrote my book, you won't believe how many athletes, sprinters, rugby players, cricket players, soccer players had contacted me and, and told me, you know, Mr. Buckley, thank you so much for the book, for your book, that we read your book. You know, it has opened up my eyes and given me a different uh, vision on how I can go forward or come out of the situation of depression, the hole that I'm in. Yeah, which for me, that's a big win. And that was the idea why I wrote the book. Because yep. me sitting down and going and speaking to people, you know, it, it's difficult. It's difficult. I did it. I did it when I, when I, when I won coaching. I went to, uh, to do motivational um, talks to schools, to corporate companies, yep. you know, and it was, it, was, it was successful. But at the end of the day, you know, if you read a book and then you identify yourself with someone, that's come out of your area or not far from you or from Durban. Yeah. Yeah. You identify yourself and say, okay, look, this guy, oh, uh, I'm not the only one that, that's going through this or, or, or been through this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have an audio book that's coming? No, no, no. I kept it as simple as possible. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You go to Switzerland, come back motivated. You won two trophies there. Then, the 7th, December 2007. Yeah, there was a very, very interesting birthday wish. But I'll tell you how, how it got there. You know, the, you know, the first year at Dortmund when I played, I said to you I was going through this bad patch, which fans were booing me. So they asked the club to loan me out to FC Basel to get my mind free. And they did. So I went to Basel. I had a great season. Basel wanted to sign me. They didn't want me to come back to Dortmund. Yeah. But Dortmund, they came to watch Laden Petridge, the striker. Yes. And they wanted to sign him, and they saw, oh, Darren Buckley's on top four. And I was only loaned out. So they brought me back. When I came back, uh, they had another coach, uh, Bert from Mike, Bert from Mike, he wasn't there anymore. So they had another coach which 
which uh, gave me self-confidence. He believed in me. And I started playing. I became a really good player. And I was playing really, really well. And now you come into the, the 7th of December. And the funniest thing is that on this day was my birthday. I think I yeah. turned 30 years yeah. old. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> and the team we were playing against was Amina Bielefeld. <laughs> I didn't tell him. So, and, and then um, I got put onto the field in the 75th minute or so. Yeah. came on because the coach didn't want the, the regular players to play. Because yeah. Bielefeld weren't having a good run. Yeah. <coughs> so he used the players that weren't playing, but then he put me on on the 75th minute. And when I came on, the stadium speaker says, yeah, in German, yeah, Darren Buckley is turning 30 years old, let's all wish him. And the funniest thing, the whole, even the fans from Bielefeld and the fans from Dortmund started singing happy birthday. That the game even came to a standstill, which oh is wow. strange. It's never ever happened in history. Proudest moment? Yeah, of course. I mean, okay. you know, that the first year I went through with Dortmund, it was, it was hell. Yeah. And then you come back and table, table changes, table turns, you know, for the good. And then the fans start liking you, you know, because they see you performing. And it's just amazing because when, when I stood there and you had 80,000 singing happy birthday, especially the, B the, the opposition fans singing for you as well. I just stood there and I said, it's unbelievable how life works. Wow. Huh? Unbelievable. <coughs> I got, I got, I got um, a, a message from um, a, a good friend of yours. Um, he says, Darren and I built a level of trust down the left and hand side. For many years, he had my back knowing that I had his. I knew I could rely on him when times got tough. He was and will always be a hard worker and a true friend. To survive as long as he did as a player and endure the setbacks he had to deal with takes a special person. And talent alone does not cut it. He is a household name in Germany and does not get credit he deserves back home in South Africa. I am so happy to see him under the guidance of Middendorp. He deserves to be giving back all his wisdom for the, for, for the youngsters back home. I will follow his progress for sure. Who is this? Cornell. Yeah, Bradley. Bradley Cornell. Yeah, I, I, was, <laughs> I was in touch with him huh? um, uh, the, the, oh, this nice, morning. Man. Yeah. 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 Brad. G yeah. Great mate of yours? Oh, he was my roommate, yeah. Top, top guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bafana Bafana days, 73 caps, obviously. Um, but your call up Bafana Bafana 98 caused a lot of controversy. And um, how did Which it one? affect you? I mean, the, the, the World Cup squad going to, go, going to France 98. How, how that did not affect you, though? No, no, not actually. You know, you, you know, the thing is that when I was playing, as I said, overseas, uh, I looked up to players like Lucas Aribi, Mark Fish, and uh, the team that had that won the African Cup here in South Africa. So I was just a, a boy, a young boy coming up into the ranks, and all of a sudden you get a call up to come to the national team for the 30 squad that was gonna was selected to come for trials to be selected to go to the World Cup uh, yeah. 98. And I was shocked because. Uh, Klaus Topmuller, they got the email, like, Bucks, you've been called up for the national team. I'm like, you're joking, you're serious? He said, yeah, huh? <laughs> for the World Cup. But it's, you know, it's, it's the selection, the, the, the dirty man squad. So I thought to myself, okay, you're cool. Huh? So then I flew to Johannesburg, and then we had all the trainings, and uh, day by day, plays were getting cut. But I didn't have any, I didn't have the emotion to say, look, I have to be in the squad. You know, because I knew I'm amongst players that were highly ranked. They've won the African Cup. Yeah, yeah, you know, you yeah. had your Eric Tinklers, you had your Helman Kalelas, you had your Dr. Dr. Kumalo, you know, and then you have it in your mind like, I can't compete with these guys. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. yeah. But then on the, one, on the one hand, I thought to myself, I just have to do what I have to do, what I do best. Oh, yes. Just dribble my speed you know, the intelligence of, of, of playing, passing, crossing. And I'm sure that impressed uh, the coach at the time. Yeah, Philip Trasse. Philip Trasse, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so as the team was getting cut down, it was very interesting because he had one conference the one time. 
in the camp we were staying. And one reporter asked him about me, about me, and he called me a palooka. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> and Philip just said he flipped. He flipped. He wanted to hit this, this, yeah. this guy. Yeah. And that's. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> I don't know who was, but I didn't know what was going on. I just found out later that yeah. this happened at the press conference. Yeah. But that showed, you know, that, um, you know, he, he, wanted, he wanted players that, that, that it didn't matter who you were or how old you were. You know, he wanted the quality to build his team. A, yeah. a team that he can trust. That he can trust. Yeah. You, you go play Olympics, Benny McCarthy, Quentin Fortune, Aaron Mukwena, Emil Baron. Um, Jabu Maslang, Steve Lecole, um, such a talented bunch of players, you know, top, top, most playing overseas. In a minute, how, how do you sum up your contribution as an individual to the national team and as a group? Well, for me, the national team was, was always something big. No matter when they called me for which game, where, I was always available because I was proud South African that always wanted to put the jersey on. <coughs> talking about the, the Olympic Games 2000, um, the team you're talking about was, for me, it was uh, one of the best teams we had at national team, under 23s. Because if you see the players we had, also Matthew Boot, Belum uh, Numvete, yeah. uh, Stanton Fredericks. The quality was there, it was just a pity with why they didn't keep this team together, develop all the way to the first national team. Yeah. If they did that, um, I can guarantee you we would probably had success on winning African Cups, maybe even coming to a semi-final of, of a World Cup because the, the, the quality was there. Yeah. And f you know, to put my five cents into this team was, was unbelievable because you had, you played with players that were young. The majority of the players, as I said to you, like Benny McCarthy, Bailey, were all playing in Europe. Yeah. So we had this European understanding, this connection in the team. Yeah, just the pity we didn't have enough success. And also a pity they didn't suffer, didn't keep this team together. Yeah. Mm. And just in, 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 in closing, um, your academy, how far, whereabout are you there? And also just on, 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 on your ambitions as a, as, a, as a coach. Okay, my academy, um, the reason why I opened up academy is because when I was at when, when I was a coach at Amazulu, I saw there was a big gap between development and players coming into the first team. We, as coaches, the minute the player gets pushed into the first team, they still have to learn st stupid basics, how to play a diagonal ball, how to turn quickly, quickly with less touches. And that's what I've saw. So what I've did, uh, I wanted to, um, this, this, this margin, you know, this, this line to, to get a very, very small, I mean, open up academy and teaching kids just the basics. Doesn't matter who. Don't have to have the talent. Anyone can come. So all I do, I teach kids the basics: less touches, turning, um, to pass. You know, precise passing, passing, running into space. Yeah. Yeah? So it's just the basics. I teach kids. These yeah. kids are all at their clubs. They just come for just the basic training. So that's what my academy is all about. Yeah. Great stuff. <coughs> um, Ladies and gentlemen, I had an honor of being joined by one of the deadliest left footers South African football have witnessed, Daron Bugs, uh, Buckley, um, Borussia Dortmund uh, legend. Thank you very much for joining us. And please, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, your channel, Lutanos Dego TV. I just want to thank you for your support in 2020. And we're going again big this year. And thanks to my support team, Limela Media, and everyone who's supporting us. See you soon. Thank you.